Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at the sampler track. So if you're not aware, a sampler is a typically digital piece of music technology which allows the playback of a bit of audio at different pitches. So it's a keyboard which uses audio as its sound source. They became pretty popular in the early 80s and pretty much defined the sounds of sort of mid to late 80s uh, music. And while it's less obvious that samplers are used now because they don't have short memories, so they're not just used for sort of repeated dog sounds or no, 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 19 kind of effects, samplers are a mainstay of modern music production. So today's the day where we're going to take a look at that. Cubase has sampler tracks built in. They're not incredibly powerful, but they're certainly useful for basic sampling duties. So that's what we're going to take a look at. And because they're built in, they're much less trouble than third-party sampler plugins in many cases. So let's see them in action. First things first, we're going to create a new track in the time-honored way by two-finger or right-clicking here and then picking Add Sampler Track. I'm going to call it Sample because I'm very boring. And we can see the sampler track appears in the bottom section here. And we need to drag, as it says here, drop audio sample or MIDI part here. So today we're just going to be looking at doing this with samples. And there's two ways we can get these in. So we can either do them with the Media Bay or we can load them directly. So first things first, we're going to look at Media Bay because then you can just start playing around with the included content. So you open Media Bay by going to Media and then Media Bay or hitting F5 on your keyboard. And typically it will be in this kind of mode. Uh, big window which will just take everything up so two things to do firstly make the window a little bit smaller so you can see this dotted area here because this is the area where we need to drop the sample and secondly change this from all media types just untick all media types and then tick audio files and should be in business so now you can start finding samples that you want to use so i'm just going to find a sample which is going to have sort of a, a chord stab kind of thing so we can look through some of these others here we can see in blockbuster once you drill down through a few levels we get one shot so one shots are typically the thing we're going to be looking for today so there's but some of these are a bit wacky you can see this uh, a minute and a half probably isn't what i would think of typically as a one shot but there we go there's some tonal hits. Yeah, etc. Uh, I'm going to find one which actually is in the Kaleidoscope one. And I think it's... I think it's around here somewhere. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to go for. So I'm going to use this. Now, when you find a sample you want to use, you just click and hold and then drag it to the dotted area here. And it gets loaded up so there we can see that sample is there and ready to go and now you can play it just like you would any other instrument so i'm going to load the on-screen keyboard and you'll see my key presses on screen so changing octave and that's it you can play it now anybody who's well unfortunate enough to be my age and spent time at raves in the 90s and you'll recognize all sort of rave music etc because it was all based around short samples of things which have parallel harmonies in. So the harmonies were built in. And then when you play different notes. Etc. That kind of thing. You can hear that parallel harmony moving. And that's why one of the reasons why rave music sounds the way that it does. Once you've got your sample in, you can record it just like anything else. So it's just MIDI data, just like you have with an instrument. So I'm just going to quickly record just a few notes. can quickly open that up and quantize it and now it'll be in time etc so once you've got your sampler track if you need to reopen that you can just click this open close sampler button and then we're back to the sampler rather than the midi editor you can change this sample and it will be played with the same notes. So the same notes can play on a different sample. So if we decided to change this, I'm just going to pop back to Media Bay. Let's try 
Yeah, let's try that one. That will do. So I can just drag this on and change the sample and it will still be played with the same notes. Etc. So you can change that after, just like you can change the sound on an instrument track after you've played the notes. They work in exactly the same way. So that's loading sounds from Media Bay, but it's also possible to load the sounds directly. So I'm going to delete this and then load a sound up. So if you click this folder icon, you can import an audio file directly. Now there is one caveat to be aware of with this. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to find a sample we want to use. So you can see we can audition them. I'm going to go with that one. This is from the sample loops to the R loop sample pack that I linked in a previous video. And that's loaded that up. But the issue is if you then deleted the file that you've just loaded. So in my case, it's in my samples folder and I'm not going to delete that anytime soon. But if it was just hanging around loose in your downloads folder or whatever, if you delete that file, then the song will stop working. OK, so you need to be a bit ordered about this kind of thing. Generally, if you're going to keep some samples, one idea is to copy them to a project folder. But another idea is to build up a library of samples that then you don't delete. So it's up to you how you handle it. Now, this has illustrated one of the potential problems with using samples that you load up is that this has ended up in a loop mode. So I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's quite long, but it's actually looping. So this next bit you see here in color is a loop and it will just play this round constantly because the sampler track has detected data and decided that this is a loop sample. So if this happens to you, you can turn this off. You might be able to use it, but you can turn it off by clicking here and going to no loop. Now it will only play it once. And importantly, we can use this handle here to do what I wanted to do. So when I play this sample with the on-screen keyboard, lovely though it is, I only want the first chord. And if I press my key too long, I get a bit, I get a bit too much. So it means I'd have to be super precise with this. So what we're going to do is drag this sample end handle, which you may need to zoom out to find. Just click and drag that across until the point where I think the second chord starts. Oh, there's a little bit of the other note in there. So I'm just going to zoom in. And then, yeah, it looks like you can see it there. So I'm just going to move it to there and then Right, so now that's finishing where I want. And now we can play that just like the other sample. And you can even play them together. So here they are a fifth apart. You can do what you want with them. OK, so that's the two ways of loading up samples and just a brief look at one of the controls that you'll need. You can play around with these, the loop controls, etc. But we'll maybe do those in another video if we get time. But that's the beginnings of using the sampler track. I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon.